David Brewster here with an episode of Chord Play, and this is part two of the Chords of Led Zeppelin. And I did feature Jimmy Page in a three-for-all last year, and that was kind of in the late 90s period when he worked with the Black Crows. So it's been a while since we've looked at his chords. That was technically in 2019 when I did, you know, episode one of Led Zeppelin. And that was actually the first uh, lesson where I had proper lighting in my studio, and it no longer looked like a dark cave or dungeon in my studio here. But, um... Definitely a huge Jimmy Page fan. I love Led Zeppelin. I've loved Led Zeppelin since I was about 14, maybe going on 15 or something like that. And I know I've had a lot of guitar influences for sure. Eddie Van Halen definitely, you know, primary influence. That was the one that kicked off, you know, everything for me. And I did pick up a lot of chord, you know, influence and ideas from Eddie for sure. I mean, Eddie was just loaded with great, you know, chords and rhythm work and progressions. But I do remember Jimmy Page was kind of like number two because I went from Van Halen and I dove headfirst into Led Zeppelin and then eventually got into people like Joe Satriani and, you know, Vito Brada and Alex Lifeson and Andy Summers and eventually John Petrucci. There's a whole bunch of chord influences, you know, I've had on guitar. But Jimmy Page is definitely very important because he opened, you know, open tunings and acoustic ideas, electric ideas, these really you know, interesting uh, chord voicings and progressions, you know, a huge chord influence on me and millions of guitarists all over the world. And it's funny because I've had so many conversations with people over the years, students and friends and complete strangers and people online or whoever. And obviously Led Zeppelin has a massive, you know, fan, fan base. They're arguably one of the most popular rock groups of all time. They have a huge fan base, but then they also have a huge uh, anti-fan base where, you know, I've met a lot of people that don't like Led Zeppelin, they don't like Jimmy Page, I've talked to drummers that don't like John Bonham or vocalists that don't like, you know, Robert Plant or whoever. I haven't really met anybody that said anything negative about John Paul Jones, but I'm sure there are people out there that have something negative about him too. But I've never understood it because if you like rock music, uh, Led Zeppelin's essential, you know, that's like the cornerstone of rock music. Rock guitar, rock drums, rock bass, rock vocals. I mean, no no offense to the Beatles, but really I think that Led Zeppelin's the most important four-piece rock band in all, you know, of all time. And I know there's people that are gonna argue with me about that. And like I said, no offense to the Beatles, but the Beatles were a pop group. I mean, they were a rock band, but that was pop music. I mean, maybe some of the later psychedelic experimental period was more rock. But to me, Led Zeppelin just defines, you know, rock music. It was the big push of blues. There's all the energy, you know, kind of the early moments of heavy metal, you know, pushing music louder and faster and heavier. And they're essential. They're extremely important. So, uh, I mean, you don't have to agree with me, but definitely there's no way. You can't deny, you know, Led Zeppelin's importance and their influence and their popularity. It's everywhere. The opening that was Houses of the Holy from Physical Graffiti, and I realized that's Houses of the Holy album, but the song Houses of, uh, Houses of the Holy actually appeared on Physical Graffiti. Long story, but uh, I think they didn't really feel it fit that album, and they kept the song and then released it on the album after that, which was Physical Graffiti. But anyway, uh, Houses of the Holy is like this. <laughs> playing with A right there in the beginning and then adding the C and the C sharp. So Jimmy definitely, if you look through his rhythm work and his riffs and stuff, you'll see lots of blues influenced moves because he's a massive, you know, blues music fan. John Paul Jones is too. But right there you're just playing with the minor and major third. Right there, just basically bar all the way up to the high E string, and you're gonna play an A6. But they're really just, you know, Jimmy's just kind of targeting the top part. And then go back to that chord riff. And the 
third time it gets a little funkier. And then do it one more time. And just move from that A down to an E. And then he starts the single note. And then he starts dancing down uh, the series of chords. So it's basically G over D to D, and then G over D to D, and then A to E. So there's two varieties of uh, G over D hiding right here. And then go to A to E. Time just go to A and then start the opening riff again. Um, but definitely, you'll find Jimmy Page is a master of these. You know, it's like a triad master. Stairway to Heaven and Over the Hills and Far Away. There's a whole bunch of examples of this. But finding these little chords and kind of, you know, matching them together or piecing them together in a progression. I mean, he's done that for decades and decades. But that's kind of one of his signature kind of chord moves, you know, kind of playing with these little triads and partial chords. I did flash the image at the beginning of this lesson, but this is a half and half chord play lesson. The first time I've ever had, you know, half and half devoted like this. And this example is from Ramble On, which uh, of course that's from Led Zeppelin too. And I've noticed, you know, once again, some guitarists playing this a little bit off. And you really have to listen to the very beginning of the song. And you can kind of hear what Jimmy's doing in there. Because it does sound like he's really just moving from E to D back to E and then to A. But there's another chord kind of sneaking in there like this. there it is E major and then you hear him basically lift this off and he's really just barring the seventh fret there for a couple strong and then he moves to this and that's really unusual so that's basically an implied you know F uh, F sharp minor 7 but then you're also kind of hitting the low E and some of those open strings in there too so that's actually more like F sharp 11 over E and it's just for a second before he moves to A major and then adds the sus4 right there, that D note. And even though he's still just kind of holding that chord and releases the sus4, when he's strumming, he kind of creates this melodic motion, you know, moving down by doing that. So you do hear it move, even though he's just holding the same chord and just released his pinky finger this pitch change. guitar part is kind of elusive, but that's basically what Jimmy's doing. All right, up next is one of my favorite Led Zeppelin songs. This is the intro to Good Times, Bad Times, and I have noticed a few people out there that are playing this wrong, and that's why I've included this, because it is a very simple riff, but there's a little rhythmic kind of hiccup and kind of a curveball that Jimmy's thrown in, like this. <laughs> really simple it's just an E power chord banging and you're kind of waiting for the drums to come in with that drum fill and you basically do that six times and then the sixth time is when you move to the other part so you're just banging this you know two times 
like I said, the six times, slide off that chord. And then you're gonna do this, it's a D power chord. But that open A to the uh, the D there on the fifth fret is kind of crucial for the rhythm to kind of fall into place. And that's a weird little riff. Because you're moving from that D power chord after the, after the hammer on. kind of back and forth between that A and D node. Grab this F sharp, grab that A, and then you're gonna climb up chromatically there on the A string. You gotta sneak that, you know, F sharp and A in there too. And I've seen a lot of people kind of leave out that F sharp and A and they just do this. But it's in there, you really gotta listen for it. Tough riff, but it's you know based on very simple moves. But he's you know once again kind of sneaking these little curveballs and uh, secret notes in there. Okay, next up is "Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You" from Led Zeppelin II, and the band Great White actually had a great cover of this song. I guess that was the late '80s, early '90s on uh, MTV Unplugged. I do remember that. That was killer. But "Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You" is like this, and I'm using a fingerstyle technique. You could use a pick and turn this into a picking workout, but I usually just finger pick it like this. So right there, it's basically a descending, you know, uh, this descending bass line kind of movement. you know, from A to G to F sharp to F to E. And actually in the Songwriting Secrets uh, chord play episodes, I did mention this briefly in those lessons. But, uh, you know, it starts with this A, and we're really just kind of, you know, grabbing uh, these additional notes uh, here and there. So here it's A minor. And right there you're just alternating what that top note is, the high E or that uh, C note there on the B string to this and that's basically part of C major but you have G in the bass and you're also grabbing like the sus4 that D note so it's like C sus2 over G you know to C major and then right there and then right there it's basically D over F sharp and then D, uh, D7 over F sharp He basically grabs F, but he's using his thumb. And then that F resolves to uh, E major. Now you could bar that F if you want to, but the only problem with that is the previous chord, you're basically ringing or letting that C note kind of ring or sustain. And if you lift up that finger to change, you know, to, to this bar chord, you're going to hear that note cut off. So one of the only ways to keep that note ringing is to use your thumb right there, like this. Second time through, you're actually kind of playing with this G now on the high E string. And then move to that C over G and play with that G note. And then the D over F sharp to D7 sus2. And then that same F to E. And that's a really challenging guitar part. It's very simple, based around basic chords. But the way, you know, the, the chords and the notes are kind of mutating and moving, that makes it very challenging, you know, good workout for your fret hand, for sure. The next example is from the Wonton Song, and the Wonton Song is from Physical Graffiti. And there's a section in the song that has some very demanding chords, and I've had a lot of students and people ask me about, you know, this particular section of the song for years. Something like this. <laughs> So I wanted to 
conclude this in this lesson. And it basically starts with this, and that's an F add nine. Think of, or F minor add nine, rather. But think of this, you know, F minor bar chord. Well, you're gonna add that G note there, the ninth, and it starts with that. And then right here, it's gonna move to this B diminished chord. So there's some really interesting chords chiming in here. Um, you know, F add, F minor add nine to F minor. B diminished. Right there, you're just basically kind of moving part of that chord up. And then you're going to C minor 7 right here. And then right there, C sharp diminished. So there's an interesting cycle of chords right there. C uh, minor 7. C sharp diminished. here it basically starts cascading down he's kind of playing around with a minor and there's like a B flat over D and a C over E Almost kind of like an R&B or a Motown kind of riff. But really interesting, there's a lot of chords, you know, kind of chiming in there uh, from Jimmy Page. Absolute favorite Led Zeppelin song and I've had a lot of people ask you know what is your favorite Zeppelin song it's the rain song and the rain song is you know brilliant I think that's definitely Led Zeppelin's finest moment or finest you know finest release it's a great song and we're basically in open what G sus4 tuning which is very unusual and I want to kind of walk through the tuning here so we basically have D G C G C D which is really weird <laughs> Once you tune your guitar that way, open G sus4. Um, the rain song basically is like this. away I have to watch myself you know I'm filming a lesson right now I'll just sit here and play the whole song if I'm not uh, careful but with this tuning once again very unusual and Jimmy Page is definitely a tuning you know open tuning and alter tuning you know master so open G sus4 and I'm not gonna really worry about specifically what all these chords are but it really is starting with this and you're playing you're not really playing the low E you're playing everything else the seventh fret on the D and the seventh fret on the B and that's basically a G5. It's just G's and D's all the way across. And he does this reverse, you know, rake or, you know, strum. Move that down a half step. And do the same thing. And now that's G major 7. there you grab that open A string and you're gonna move down like this so that's gonna look you know familiar but we're in a different tuning so that's not familiar but that's kind of loosely based around G7 and then right there it's kind of an E6 like over G I guess and then you have uh, you know kind of playing with uh, this G sus2 
so a really interesting you know series of chords especially with the tuning that makes it really tricky to figure out okay what exactly are those chords g5 g major 7 g7 kind of an e6 implied and then that um, moving back to that g and that g sus2 and then you hear this So that's basically G, G sus2, G sus4, back to that G major, move down to the 4th fret, and that's going to be G6 down there, and then back to the ninth fret is G sus2 again. This episode of chord play with part two of the chords of Led Zeppelin. You know, definitely a massive influence on me and my chords, and you know, just you know, riffs and all sorts of things, licks and all these cool things, fills and solos. Definitely, you know, Jimmy Page is worth checking out if you haven't really gone there. And if you have gone there, it's always a good idea, you know, idea to revisit too, because it really does seem like about every ten or you know, ten or twelve years, there's a you know, a resurgence or this you know, kind of return of Led Zeppelin's influence, whether it's, you know, White Snake and Kingdom Come, or maybe Greta Van Fleet, or whoever, it does seem like, you know, lots of musicians just return to this giant bonfire of rock music that's been burning since the late 60s, because it's so inspiring, there's so much there, and it's so good, you know, it's just like, man, how can you not like this? But I know it's not for everybody, and that's cool, taste, and diversity and whatever I mean variety is the spice of life or whatever but it's like man I can't get enough Led Zeppelin you know and I can't really overstate their influence on me directly and I know a lot of people that just love you know Jimmy and uh you know John Bonham the whole gang John Paul Jones and uh anyway leave some feedback and some comments or I'm going to keep ranting and, and raving here but leave some feedback and some comments please subscribe to my lessons and I'll be back before you know with more content and material thank you